Hey, welcome back to the Sub Briefs Naval News. I came across something interesting while I was doing research for something else. This is a report to Congress on the US policies for lethal autonomous weapon systems. And contrary to what I believed, the US policy does not prohibit the development or employment of lethal autonomous weapon systems. So this uh, you know, caught my attention. I went down a rabbit hole here. And I think by the end of the video, you'll understand that the United States is certainly building these laws systems. So, so what is this type of lethal autonomous weapon system? Well, it's a system that can independently identify a target and employ an onboard weapon system to engage and destroy that target without human control. It can do it autonomously, lethally. And so these systems, I believe, are in development right, right now. Let's take a look at DOD Directive 3000.09. This was written all the way back in 2012, but it's been updated over the years and as recently as January of this year. And it says that these lethal autonomous weapon systems will be designed to allow commanders and operators to exercise appropriate levels of human judgment over the use of force. So. My question to you is, and put this in the chat, is what is an appropriate level of human uh, control and judgment? Like these systems right now can identify, track, and engage things much faster than a human can. And that's part of their value. Not only are they autonomous, they can go out and do the job much more efficiently, which is the entire argument here for using these systems. But we need to have a, a human in the loop that can intervene in case something goes wrong. It goes on to say that this does not require manual human control. So it, a human can be an observer watching these laws systems operate autonomously, but he needs to have the ability to intervene uh, should, should he have to or should he decide to. So a human will always be in the loop uh, ha as an option, but will not always be in the loop in operation is, is what that's saying. My question is, how do we uh, slow these systems down to allow the human commanders enough time and operators enough time to realize when something is going wrong and intervene before um, it, it goes too far. That's really a big concern of mine. Uh, the use of AI capabilities in autonomous and semi-autonomous systems will be consistent with the Department of Defense AI ethical principles. So this is the first time I've heard that DOD has AI ethical principles. My question is, what are these? Can we read them? Are they even public? And then how do you program that into a machine? A deep question here is, can a machine, an artificial intelligence, have ethics? Or do you need to have a can only human beings have ethics? That is a, you know, a question for philosophers, not necessarily scientists. Or by AI ethical principles, are we saying that we're gonna set guardrails on the decision-making processes of these algorithms? Is that, is that the way we're gonna do it? What do you think uh, is the best way to employ ethics in a machine that's making decisions about life and death, about lethal force? All right. So one of the big oversights that is happening and is directed to happen by, from Congress is that there will be a, um, a secondary senior level review is required for all autonomous and semi-autonomous semi systems. And the laundry list of admirals and generals that are on this list goes all the way from the Joint Chiefs of Staff all the way down from everybody in Washington DC and, and in, even in the Pentagon. It is more than I can list here in this video. So there is an enormous amount of oversight from senior military leaders on these programs as they're being developed, which is great news that everyone's got something to say or at least is, is being informed uh, about these sy symptoms. Symptoms? Systems. All right, uh, the US government does not currently support a ban on laws. This is uh, internationally you know, recognized. There is some 30 countries out of the 165 or however many we have, um, only 30 countries support a ban on these systems, which means the overwhelming majority of countries know that this is the future. And if they don't get it first, you, know, you don't wanna be second in this race. And that really is the other argument besides the ethical argument of giving artificial intelligence uh, lethal force is if we don't do it and somebody else does, how does that help us? You know, I would argue that we have to do this out of self-defense because this is happening around the globe. We could make this illegal and not do it in the United States and that wouldn't change the direction of any other country in the world. Everyone's going to do make up their own mind. So banning this while 
certainly seems like it would be the moral decision. It may not be the practical decision to make. But I want to hear from you guys about is is building these lethal autonomous weapon systems a good idea? Do we need to be first on this? Yeah, you tell me. So the less risk of collateral damage. This white paper is so incredible. Um, the, the, the US government published a white paper all the way back in March uh, 2018, uh, and it was titled The Humanitarian Benefits of Emerging Technologies in the Area of Lethal Autonomous Weapons. And so our members of Congress and senior Pentagon leaders are being told by not only private think tanks, but the United States government's own uh, think tank people that write these white papers and push them up the chain of command that this type of autonomous system is going to be more efficient and result in less risk of collateral damage or civilian casualties, that these systems will be more precise than human soldiers, okay, with their targeting and their engagement. So we're looking at lower death counts in war is, is, is the implied result here. My concern is, is that if this is true, right, that then war would become much more frequent because there would be less hazard involved. And uh, war is already frequent enough. We don't want to justify war by saying, hey, you know, it's only going to be military targets, you know, and then something goes wrong and things escalate far beyond what we can envision. So, yeah, these are the types of white papers. I see two futures here. One uh, is that AI is going to be the greatest revolution in human history, or AI is going to be the greatest revolution in human history. And either way, the robots win. They're going to be dancing in the street. The question is, where are we going to be in this future? Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great one. Bye. Got some moves. So I just want to say this publicly now that I welcome our new robot overlords and that the Subbrief channel is a supporter of the next AI president. So please kill me last. Thank you. I wonder if we'll use this as batteries. <laughs>